Good morning. This is our last morning together as we talk about people who had encounters with Jesus. This morning we're going to look at Mark chapter 12 verses 41 to 44 about the widow in the temple. I have found over the years that some of the most poignant and beautiful stories recorded for us about Christ have to do with his encounters with women. The woman at the well, the woman who reached out and touched the hem of his garment, his encounter with Mary Magdalene at the tomb, and here we have another incident recorded for us in the book of Luke and also in Mark. It is the story of a woman who is not well known. We don't know her name or much about her. Her story only takes up four verses, and yet today after all these years, sermons are still being preached about her for she provides for us some very important lessons. Mark 12 verses 41 to 44 says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Then calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Knowing the disciples from what I read, I would think they probably looked at him a little strange because they didn't really understand so much of where he was coming from. Imagine that a widow giving such a pitiful amount would receive accolades from Jesus, yet the rich with all they gave did not appear to be significant. We can only imagine if Judas was there what went through his mind. I wondered as I thought about this dear woman, is it possible that she had met Jesus before because he knew all about her, that she was a widow and that she was poor? Perhaps she was there when Jesus fed the crowd with the loaves and fishes and as she watched him take it in his hands and bless it and feed the crowd with it, I wondered if she may have thought, I don't have much to give, but maybe if I give it to him, he will make it more. When we first retired, we lived across the street from our first granddaughter. She was about three at the time. It was my birthday and the family had gotten together. And Jessie's mom had bought a gift for her to give to me, among all the other gifts I received. About a half an hour after we got home, Jessie came over with a little gift bag. And it is some of her own things in it. She had gotten a bag from her mother, went into her bedroom and went through her treasures, put some of them in this bag for me. These were her own personal things and she wanted to give me a gift that cost her something, not just what someone else had bought for her to give. My heart was touched that day with this act from this young child. Someone rightly said we can give without loving but we cannot love without giving. Herbert Lockyer said of this woman, she was probably not aware how her small offering among so many gifts that day had gladdened the sorrowful soul of him who was on his way to give his all at Calvary. Let us pray. Father, for your ultimate gift in sending your only beloved son into this world, to die for each of us. We give you grateful thanks. May we never take for granted all that you have done and continue to do for us and ours. In Christ's name we pay, pray. Something to think about. Someone drew a picture of a man in church lustily singing, were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, 
demands my soul, my life, my all. And all the while, he is carefully feeling the coins in his pocket to make sure that it's a loony and not a toony that he will put into the offering plate. Have a wonderful Sunday, and God bless you.